day more Another day, another destiny This never-ending road to Calvary These men who seem to know my crime Will surely come a second time One day more Please welcome Robin Calablu I love this guy. Thank you. It's quite a role, especially in this era, to be able to do that. How do you feel about it? Oh, just uh, pretty honored and excited. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at that clip, <laughs> and that beard is ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's just so cool to be back home to do it. It's just, it's weird that it's all happening, too, yeah. you know? It's, it came out of nowhere. Different ways you can connect to this character, different ways you can connect to Valjean. How did you do it? It's weird, I didn't want to play it. I turned it down a couple times, and uh, it was when I was about to film the 25th anniversary of Phantom of the Opera that I'll get, we're in rehearsals, and they say, Cameron McIntosh wants to come and speak to you, and they clear the room. And uh, he goes, I'll do me the favor and play Jean Valjean, because obviously at this point I'm turning it down, and I'm like, since when does anyone say, do me a favor to, to play that role? He had so much faith in me, so I said to him, okay, one condition, if I suck, you can't be mad at me. <laughs> right. So I said, I'll do my best. Was it Hugh Jackman said that when he played the character that it was, for him, he really just embodied his own relationship with his dad? But you didn't do that. So what was your way? How did you dive into this? It's funny, the last sort of 10 years of my life, I've worked with Cat Stevens about, or uh, well, Yusuf Islam about, yeah. I don't know, eight, nine years ago. And he's so, such a prolific man, and, you know, musically and with faith and what he went through, his story is phenomenal. Yeah. And that's sort of, I started reading about faith after working with him for four weeks, you know, reading the Koran, the Bible, and studying, uh, trying to gather as much information as I could. Well, he took it down a really extreme road. Now, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but, but he, it, how he got there, you know, he went through everything. Right. And I found a lot of honor in that and integrity, because at least he, he knew what he wanted. When he was talking to you about the Koran, did he ever Sing it like, I've been reading lately. Well, no, I wish he did, though. <laughs> I'm reading this book, chapter in this book. No, 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 no. It's like I was just sat with Cat Stevens right here. <laughs> yeah, except I wouldn't endorse the fatwa on Salman Rushdie, but that's different. That's right. Um, this is a classic Canadian band. Can we hear this for one sec? Why do I think putting stuff on YouTube is smart? Why do you put it? In, well, first of all, uh, they are gods among men, the tragically Forget hip. Forget about and it, yeah. I think sometimes in this country, when someone's been around for a long time, we take them for granted. But n never can you underestimate the value of Gord's lyrics and what the band has meant Absolutely. to this country. But you were in a tragically hip cover band. That's what started me singing. Yeah. I was, because uh, I could do his little, his, he had a nice shaky voice, yeah. you know. <laughs> His voice is phenomenal. Yeah. You, I, how does the shaky voice sound? I can't do it now. Yeah, I've got the Valjean voice now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Gordon Downey does Valjean. If you want to hear Gordon Downey do Valjean, come see the show. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> how you, I think it would be really hilarious if in the middle of Les Mis, in one of your really key moments when you're out there belting it, if you just say, and get Fry Cooter to sing my eulogy, yeah. it would be so great. Should, oh, yeah. I could throw that in the first scene, I think. Yeah, no one would yeah. Do it in French. No one would know. Um, Perfect. The, <laughs> But what was it like being in a hip cover band? You've met Gord Downey, right? With this is the thing. Like, in 2009, at this point, I've had a bit of a, you know, press being, you know, the Canadian boy doing Phantom and whatnot. Yeah. So that I got somehow sorted out VIP tickets to go see them in London, England, which over there they play to smaller audiences, more intimate, but they still rock it like there's 50,000 people. Yeah, yeah. Then I waited, and they were all coming out, and they made me feel like their friend. It was unbelievable. And I remember 45 minutes later going down, he walks through the press and everyone beelines to me and goes, Raman, pleasure to meet you, man. Stoke you were here. I was like, <laughs> I tried to play it cool, but I had their jersey from the Millennium concert they did, they did at ACC. Like a fanboy, I was there. Can you sign this for me? <laughs> I got the whole band to sign it, but they were the coolest dudes. Okay, anthropology time. Who would win in a fight, the Phantom or Jean Valjean? Jean Valjean. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Yeah. We're talking no tricks, right? right. Fist to fist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we gotta give it to Valjean. Valjean. Isn't the Phantom a bit creepy, this dude watching this kid since she was like 12 or 13, just sort of hanging around? I Isn't took a bit, a bit of artistic license yeah. when I played it, so I took the creep, hopefully the creepiness out of it. <laughs> I was quite young when I played it, so. All right, um, <laughs> what's the one thing you should never do on a motorcycle? Think about crashing. Right? Because I was told, the moment you think about crashing, get off the bike. Yeah, have you crashed? No, close. But I ride, I got a Harley, so yeah. you ride with a different mentality yeah, as well. Yeah, slow and straight, right? Yeah, and it's loud, I want people to see me. <laughs> That's a good idea. It's funny, because in England, you can filter traffic. Right. So, you know, and with my Harley and the leathers, they all think I'm like Hell's Angels, and they all move. <laughs> Little do they know, I'm like, thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> So you pose nude with only the phantom mask covering your crotch, now right? Listen. Right? No, yeah. hold on. My question is, what did you do with the mask afterwards, and did you just put it back in a rotation? First of all, that was a big mask. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> there was but, a hole no, in it. No. But did it need to be a big mask? Is the question. I shouldn't answer that one right now. What's <laughs> the time? Um, that was her testicular cancer. Yes. Yeah, so it was, you yeah. know. I'll never do it again. No? No, because of moments like this. <laughs> you have to live with it forever. Yeah. Congrats on everything. What a real pleasure to see you, man. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Very well, let Princess of Wales for Les Miserables. It's at the Theatre of the Princess of Wales, Toronto, through February the 2nd. Ramin Karmalou. We'll be right back.